decide to to run? Well, um, I think um, primarily I have been very concerned as a legislator for the, for the last 12 years uh, about the direction and the priorities of the state of Florida. I served as the uh, Democratic uh, leader of the Senate the last two years, uh, 2010 to 2012 and um, was um, kind of responsible for trying to uh, stop some very bad legislation, in our opinion, from passing. And, um, you know, I, 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 in November of 12, I was term limited. So, you know, then you have a choice uh, of what direction you want to go. And um, I kind of looked around at the people that I thought might um, you know, think about running, and I just said, why not me? Uh, I felt I had the experience, 12 years, as I mentioned, in the legislature, uh, a lot of uh, community activism before that, and uh, I felt that I, uh, I have the passion, certainly, and uh, I think that I can help turn this state around and focus it back again on putting people first and the whole issue of equality and fairness across the board and how government should serve all the people. Now, obviously, your first challenge is going to be uh, facing uh, primary, possibly. possibly. Uh, what are your thoughts <laughs> on uh, some of the people whose names have been thrown around, Alex Sink, Charlie mm -hmm. Crist? Um, how, do you, how do you think you fare against, against people like that? Well, I'll tell you that I'm really not focused on that right now. Uh, what I've been doing is traveling around the state uh, for the last uh, more than six months um, and uh, really building an infrastructure. Um, kind of, a, I, I believe in the grassroots uh, and, and working from the bottom up. So that's what I've been focused on. And you know, there are things you have over which you have control and things that you don't. And I have no control over who gets into this race. So whoever it is, um, I've been a, a progressive Democrat um, all my years in the legislature and actually through all my adult life. And I uh, believe that um, you have to put your credentials up against whomever enters the race. And I'm very comfortable with putting my uh, democratic credentials, my, the core values and principles uh, in which I believe, I, I, I'm comfortable putting them up against whoever decides to get into the race, whether it's Charlie Crist, Alex Inc., uh, anybody. So some would say that you might uh, not have quite the same name recognition as some of your <laughs> potential challengers, uh, and you've gotten an early jump on, on mm -hmm. combating that. Uh, what, are your, what are your plans to make sure that that doesn't become an issue? Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. I mean, it, it, uh, when, when someone has been elected to statewide office, obviously their name recognition is going to be uh, higher. Um, I have never run for statewide office before. But as I mentioned, that, that's why I'm out there trying to build this, working hard to build this infrastructure, because that helps your, with your name recognition. And I'll give you a, a quick example, and that is that now when a reporter uh, doesn't put my name in an article, uh, the grassroots folks are the ones that email or call the reporter and say, what are you doing? Why didn't you put her name? Why didn't you put Nan Rich in the article? She's the only, you know, kind of credible, declared Democratic candidate, and uh, we're supporting her. And then they turn around and do an article or put my name in the next, uh, in the next uh, article that they write. So it's coming from the bottom up, and that's what I, uh, I'm excited about, and it energizes me to go around from community to community and see the kind of reaction and welcome that I'm getting. Now, looking towards 2014, uh, what would be your, some of your top priorities in office? Um, well, the number one priority in this state, I believe, is education. And, you know, the governor talks about jobs and the economy. But, you know, but then he turned around and signed a budget that cut $300 million from higher ed. And in, in his initial two years also, you know, cut money from the budget for education. You know, education to me is the great equalizer. Uh, to have a strong quality public education so uh, each child has, you know, an opportunity to reach their full potential, I think is one of the most important things that we can do in this state. So, uh, but it's not only K-12, to it has to do with, with the whole continuum of education from child care where you have 72,000 children on a waiting list. I don't know how that helps you know, jobs and the economy and spur the, to spur the economy when you're talking about all those children that don't have a place to go so that their parents can uh, go to work or at least a safe place for them to go. And then you have uh, 
uh, you know, universal pre-K that we have in this state, where we could have been the model for the nation. We're not because we haven't put the money into it. We don't have the, uh, the, the benchmarks, the national standards, outcomes that other states have. And then you go to higher ed, which um, obviously uh, that should be the economic engine in this state, but you have to invest in it. So investing in education in the whole continuum would be, to me, one of the top priorities. And the other, of course, is health care. What happened in this session is a disgrace uh, that this state, uh, that the legislature, the governor and the legislature, you know, could not come to an agreement to take the $51 billion that is Florida's share of the Medicaid expansion money through the, uh, through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, that's money that our taxpayers send to Washington, to their federal funds, and should be coming back to the state of Florida. And because the legislature uh, ended in an impasse, uh, we don't, we're, we're, we have no mechanism to take that money. And a million Floridians will not get health care, will not be covered because of that. So to me, that is also you know, a, a, a very, very high priority to make sure that all, that all Floridians, uh, you know, have that access to health care. And the last thing would be voting rights. Uh, the bill that passed this year does not restore the things the, the, uh, that were put in place in the Voter Suppression Act that was passed in 2011. So we need to make sure that voting rights are protected for every eligible citizen in Florida. Is